Hi guys, this is Arthur from IGN, joined by Kevin Grace, franchise manager of 343 Industries. And we are checking out Halo Anniversary. Yeah, so we are uh, here today taking a look at a level called 343 Guilty Spark. Uh, this is a, a new level of the game that we're just showing off now, and previous demos of the game have gone into a lot about the, uh, the remastered graphics, what it, we've done with Halo, what we've uh, been able to do for remastering for 10 years after the original came out. And we decided that for today, we would start off in the classic mode to kind of show you what this level looked like once upon a time. So this is a, a, one of the foggier, more mysterious parts of the original game. You're kind of used to fighting in the sunlight and fighting in the clean foreigner structures. Uh, and then as the uh, mystery on the Halo opens up, you get dropped into this kind of scary place. So uh, one of the things we're looking at on this new level, which he's just actually cast aside there, is that's okay. Uh, is we've got some of the new uh, models of the weapons in there. The assault rifle's now looking like uh, it did in the original game alongside the Magnum. And then we've got some of the new weapons, uh, like the shotgun. So right now they're all looking, of course, like old mode, uh, because we're still playing in classic. And so by hitting that back button, if you would be so kind, uh, you can look up and take a look at, or you can get shot in the face, uh, you can take a look at what the swamp looks like now. So coming in, we saw that uh, a lot of the Draw distances were short, you kind of felt very claustrophobic, um, uh, get a lot of the mystery going on with that environment. But now what we've been able to do with uh, the power of the 360, obviously, over the original Xbox, uh, and with all the tips and tricks we've learned about doing games in the meantime, is we've made a swamp that just flat couldn't exist 10 years ago. Uh, so looking around here with the rain, with the trees, and with the active shadows from the branches up above, uh, the creepy alien light-up trees, which actually were... Uh, a part of the original game. That's one of the, the fun parts about having the switch to classic mode right there on the back button, uh, is if you wanted to see what a light-up tree looked like 10 years ago, uh, you can just hit it, and bam, yes, they're there, they're lit up. Uh, but obviously we've been able to put some uh, a lot of really good work into uh, what they look like in the, the remastered mode now. So, so like I said, this level is one of the more mysterious parts of the game because uh, there's obviously Cortana's told you that Captain Keys is going to try to get a weapons cache, take it from the Covenant, stop them from opening it, uh, but she's got some hints that that weapons cache isn't exactly uh, full of weapons in the most traditional sense. So uh, you've been sent to hopefully stop Keys before he can get into a great big mess. And uh, going through here, we've got obviously a lot of crazy amount of work going into what does it look like 10 years ago versus what should it look like today and making sure it all feels right for Halo. So we've uh, done just a lot of work in, yeah, old, yeah. It's, old it, tree. We still have a lot of old tree, but it's, it was a good tree back then. It was a great tree back then. Um, but obviously now, and coming up, if you just get up past this just a little bit more, there's a pretty good vista that shows off like really the big difference between old and new. If you can see like how far you can see right here, versus hitting that back button and taking a look at the world around you. Uh, it's, just a, it's just a brand new thing. And that really was one of the, the two main goals that we had for the remastering of the game here was, first and foremost, uh, to stay true to all of the classic gameplay from 2001. So as you're jumping across here, as you've seen in some of these transitions, and you, you can do yourself just as many times as you want, uh, if you go back and look at that log in old and new, it's, it's the same log in the same place. And so if you're fighting on that log, it's the same fight. But what we've done is try to... Uh, give you a new experience and make that log look like the log is a terrible example. I shouldn't use this anymore. Uh, but really, it's, it gives you that feeling of, of coming to Halo for the first time like you did 10 years ago and kind of re-experiencing this adventure uh, with Chief and Cortana and everybody else. So we will uh, finish our Kung Fu the Covenant here. Uh, swing. Oh, yeah. Shotgun, so good. So, as you guys have been going through and sort of adding and embellishing on the original Halo, but what was your sort of philosophy? Like, was there a point where you said that would be going too far? And where do you draw the line? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's, a, it's, it's an interesting line of, of figuring out what is, I mean, like, there's no scientific definition for faithful. So, in all of these decisions, like, how much uh, foliage do we put on the ground? How much rain do we put in the sky? All of those kinds of things is... Uh, a process that we've, we've gone through with a bunch of people who, uh, who love Halo, who've been working on Halo for a long, long time. And really, at the end of the day, it's, it is kind of that feeling. I mean, it's, it's not a precise answer, but it's looking like Halo, as fans have come to know it, through uh, all of the Halo games. Halo 1, 2, 3, ODST, Reach, like all the Halo games have kind of created a feel 
a look and feel and an aesthetic to this universe. Uh, and, you know, at the end of the day, we kind of go around and around and around on what do the walls look like? What does the lighting look like? What does the 400 glass look like? And on each of those points, uh, we've got sometimes uh, our, our, our developer, Sable, would probably agree, uh, we've got seemingly endless rounds of iteration on these things to try to make them feel right and look right. And that's a great place for a grenade. That would be very satisfying. There you go. That same approach to uh, what we've done with updating all the graphics and, uh, and some of the audio in the game uh, is very similar to what we did when we put the terminals together for the story, is try to add something to the game that felt like it really would have belonged back in 2001 when the game first came out, um, but that will reward fans for, you know, kind of coming back and playing through the game again. Uh, you know, if, if they've played through the game a hundred times, the idea is that the terminals will add something to the story and add something to the to the characters that they wanted to have before. And if it's playing through for the first time, then it'll give you a little bit of an explanation about what's going on around here uh, and maybe why this particular sequence of, uh, of four-runner corridor, corridor, four corridors uh, is leading you to a particularly scary place. So, just really quick, sort of where are you guys at with what you want to do to the game? Like, what what is not here or what is here in particular that you guys are really excited about? Well, there's, uh, obviously we're getting down towards the end uh, for getting the game out the door, so, you know, developing any game uh, towards the end, it's really hard kind of picking the last of the things to fix. Uh, one of the bits in particular that isn't in the build that we're playing right now is uh, the remastered audio, the, um, the soundtrack that we re-recorded with Skywalker, uh, Studios, and so we're going to have that into a build coming up pretty quick. That was a great uh, opportunity again to to be really careful about being faithful to the original soundtrack because it's a great thing. It's one of the classics in, in gaming. Uh, but to try to find a way to, to give it the he's just going to keep on. He's a very scared man. Uh, to give it the benefit of uh, of ten years worth of advances uh, for gaming and for for getting that part of the game in there. Otherwise, we've got a lot of, um, you know, again, as it is with any game towards the end, is you're playing with performance, uh, you're trying to optimize to keep everything, you know, going as smooth as possible. Uh, and we're, we're feeling really good about this, we're really looking forward to getting it out the door for this, uh, this winter, but it's the, uh, the mad dash of, of triage and the last few bugs towards the end that uh, it's kind of hair-raising, but uh, particularly because of, of how much we've got invested into this game. So after re revisiting Halo after all these years, um, was there anything in particular that surprised you as far as something that didn't need to be changed or something in particular where you thought, well, this is definitely something that we can fix or or not fix, but sort of edit or represent in a way that makes this make more sense than perhaps it did 10 years ago? There aren't a lot of things where... I think making more sense, really. There are a couple of areas of the game that I think that, that over time uh, we've realized that we might take a slightly different uh, stab at. Just a few things. It's really subtle. It's not stuff that's going to uh, be a big difference um, as far as gameplay goes. There's a few points of the game, in particular on the level uh, called the library, where uh, some of the original navigation was, could be a little challenging. And so we've added some subtle environmental clues to kind of help players get around a little bit. Just address some of those uh, some of those concerns that have been, uh, you know, percolating among fans for a long, long time. Uh, but again, we've been very, very careful uh, that, that being faithful to the original gameplay really was our number one goal uh, on this remake. So anything that we've done along those lines has uh, has been with that goal in mind. I mean, there are some things even looking at these 400 displays right there, uh, down to tiny little bits like that. Um, like if you see, they're pretty similar from old to new. But frankly, those are those are just fine. I mean, those look pretty foreigner to us. And in some cases, we would decide that we don't actually need to uh, to change things just to make them different. Just making it different wasn't the wasn't the job here. And we don't think it's what the fans would want us to do. Are there any moments in particular where you guys sort of changed something dramatically and had to stop and pull back and say this isn't what we wanted to do? Um, We've had, yeah, we'd say we've had a few of those. We don't want to get too much into the dirty laundries, but uh, looking at the, uh, like the main menu, for example, it's a tiny thing, 
uh, but kind of that first that introduction to the game, that first glimpse of the Halo ring when players started up, like exactly what that looks like has been something that we've played with, honestly, quite a bit. Uh, a little bit after kind of early fan reactions to taking into account, of course, the early fan reactions to, to some of the videos that we've put out, but just making sure, like, how do you... How do you upgrade something? How do you make it look newer and fancier without, again, just making it look different? So that's why, you know, if it's the, the lighting on the back of the halo to kind of the little bars to the walls around the edges that keeps all the nice people and aliens uh, attached to the ring on the inside, uh, we've put a lot of thought into those things. And so that's one where I'd say we've, we kind of dialed it up and then we dialed it back and we're feeling pretty good with where we're at right now. Uh, once again, I'd like to thank Kevin from 343 for walking me through Guilty Spark in the Halo anniversary. My pleasure. And uh, we look forward to bringing you more at IGN.com.